Hey nerds, what's up? So I've talked about The Grace of Kings before by Ken Liu on my slow burn video that I did a long time ago if you haven't seen it. But today I want to talk about the series as a whole and why I think more people should read it. I feel like it's a very underrated series as well as review The Veiled Throne, which is the third installment in the four book series, which will have come out yesterday in the US as this video is airing and I think has already been out in the UK for about a week. So I'll see you after the jump. So who would like the Dandelion Dynasty? I just feel like it encompasses a lot of things I see booktubers talking about that they want in a series, yet I just don't see it talked about a lot. It is a huge, expansive story. It spans over years. It is a very politically motivated story, a story about all the inner workings between many different communities, many different countries, the struggles of powers between different entities, that sort of thing. It's also extremely grim. <laughs> it's very dark. This is not a book with like a happy ending all the time. No, the characters suffer. Thing, bad things legitimately happen and it's grim things. Like grim enough that I have had to put the book down a couple of times because it's, it's so dark. It's also just excellently written. It has very good prose which is something I always appreciate. And I will say, I am not a quote saver. I feel like I can't admit that on booktube. Like everyone always has their annotations and their quotes. I'm just not really like a quote gal, but I actually save multiple quotes from these books. They're just so thoughtful and have so many good themes. I just take a picture on my phone. I think I took five while I was reading Wall of Storms, which is really unheard of for me and like two or three while reading The Veiled Throne. So just like really thoughtful, Pros, which is something I know a lot of people appreciate. I'd say the strangest thing about this series is its perspective. It is third person, which I know is very common for fantasy, obviously, but it's more of like a third person omniscient in the way that each chapter, although it usually mainly focuses on a single character, you are able to hear the thoughts and feelings of multiple characters at one time. It is a very high level bird's view of everybody. And I think at first that's a little hard to get used to. I know it was hard for me to get used to in The Grace of Kings, and it did make me feel a little bit separated from the characters, but as the series goes on, I care deeply for some of these characters, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> I, you know, I'm really invested in them, but it is like a little bit of a style to get used to. The benefit of that style though, is it really does help you with the scope of what this is. Knowing so many thoughts and feelings helps you really understand the story and the motivations, which I think is really the draw of this series. Now look, I haven't read Game of Thrones, so I'm not like positive about this, but a lot of the things I just listed are I think things I hear about why people like Game of Thrones. Now I will say it's not like down in the nitty gritty because of that third person omniscient, you're not quite in the character's feelings as much. So if that was something that was really important to you, Liu also tends to fade to black a lot in the war scenes, not always with the violence, but definitely with the sex. That's something I appreciate, but I will warn you that it is more of a fade to black if that's something that bothers you. But otherwise, I feel like a lot of the themes and motivations of this series are similar to Game of Thrones. And the benefit is that this is a finished series, no shade. So the third book that I'll be reviewing today was actually split into two, but it is already written. So the third book came out yesterday and the fourth book is slated for June, but from my understanding, it is completely written and it is the end of the series. So it's completed. And just real quick, in case you haven't seen my slow burn video, I do wanna talk about what a slow burn is just to keep your expectations in line, you know, correct. A slow burn to me is different than a boring book. It is a slow book, but it is not boring. That is an important distinction. They tend to be very long books with a lot of setup, but you're still enjoying reading the setup. And for me, the reason I enjoy reading the setup in the Dandelion Dynasty is because the writing is so good. I really love the prose, so I enjoy it. But then the action or the effect doesn't necessarily happen till around midpoint, which in these books is, is not insignificant. It's usually around 400 pages and then things start going. So that is something to warn you about. It is a book that you kind of stick with for a little bit. It actually reminds me of Rube Goldberg machines. Um, if you know what those are, those things can take forever to set up. The one I'm showing right now is from a music video. I highly recommend you look it up, I love it. It took something like six months to get from conception to set up. And the whole thing is destroyed in four minutes, I think. That's how these books feel. You have hundreds of pages of setup, and then when you hit that button, everything goes off 
and it's so rewarding and it makes sense why you had this set up. So I'm briefly gonna talk about Wall of Storms, which is the second book in the series, just because I haven't talked about it on my channel and it's probably one of my favorite books I read this year, so I wanted to give it its due diligence. This book was really good. It had that setup period and then from page like 400 on, it was just this wild ride. I also just started deeply caring about so many characters within this book and that's what I think its really shining point is. What's interesting about Wall of Storms, it's almost like Grace of Kings acts a little bit like a prequel to Wall of Storms in the third book, which I don't have a hand for, and what I assume is the fourth book, just from where we left things off. Because the Grace of Kings deals with one generation, and then Wall of Storms, The Veiled Throne, and Speaking Bones are dealing with a separate generation. There's a lot of years that pass in between, which is very interesting. And so that even makes the series feel more expansive because you're actually living history. You're living through this history of Grace of Kings and then you see the after effects in Wall of Storms. And there's a significant time jump in between Wall of Storms and the Veiled Throne as well. So that kind of contributes to the expanse. But what I will say is if Grace of Kings, if you like the writing style and you enjoyed it, but it felt like a little slow for you, I highly recommend going on to the Wall of Storms because it is really good. Okay, so let's move into my actual review of The Veiled Throne, which is kind of why we're here today. So I received an arc of this, which I was very excited about. Uh, Ken Liu's wife, Lisa, actually reached out to me on Instagram after I raved about his short story collection. And I will be talking about that and actually a few other videos, topic of the year. So I'll talk about that. But I was super excited when she reached out to me because I liked Grace of Kings so much. Again, I'm trying to keep this spoiler free just because this came out yesterday. So I want people to be able to watch this. The things I love about this book is that I deeply care about the characters. There are multiple characters now that I care about. It's an extremely stressful book, but in the right way. I think Ken Liu rocks that really good line of characters making terrible decisions, but they are decisions that the character would make. It's always hard, I feel like, when you read a book and characters are making bad decisions and it's frustrating because you're like, well, why would that character do that? I never think that once when I'm reading this book. Characters are being stupid. <laughs> They're doing things that make you crazy. Like I, I uh, buddy read this with Read by Kyle on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, go check him out. He writes the funniest reviews. And I would just be like angrily messaging him <laughs> about how upset I was about what was happening. And I feel like that's always a good sign. Like when I'm so angry or upset that I have to message someone about it or like rant to my husband who hasn't even read it <laughs> because I'm so upset, like that's when I know a book is good because so few books really elicit strong emotions in me that when I get one, it's something like I care about. So The Veiled Throne, I think, did just as good a job as Wall of Storms of having characters make decisions that have real consequences for the entire world and you having to deal with what that is, but in a way that's very believable. I also really like the themes explored in The Veiled Throne, which are a lot of things like family versus found family, like blood versus friendship, how much culture means to us and when culture should take precedent or what we feel like is right should take precedent, the clash between the conquered and conquerors and the messy line between those relationships. There are some pretty deep themes there that actually made me stop and think. And I always really like it when fantasy is a gateway to thinking about things that are happening in our real world. And Ken Liu in his short stories and clearly in this draws a lot on history and it's very clear and I really enjoy that. There were also some themes that really struck you to me. I am a parent and there were a lot of themes in The Veiled Throne in particular about relationships between children and their parents and how complicated that can be and our desires for our children and who they actually are. And I found them to be very touching a lot of the times. And so I really enjoyed that aspect. There was also a lot of good tension between what characters do know and do not know, which is a trope that I struggle with sometimes because it can be extremely frustrating when the reader knows something that our characters don't know, but I think he walked the line very well. And I think it also has to do with his story. So I really enjoyed The Veil Throne. There was only one major thing I disliked about it, which was a particular plot line, which I will call the cooking plot line, because if you read the book, that will make sense, but otherwise that gives nothing away. So there is a very long cooking plot line that spans about 200 pages. And the story itself, I liked. 
I more had a problem with its placement within the story because this 200 page kind of cooking thing happens in the last quarter of the book. The problem is this storyline that spans about 200 pages is very low stakes compared to everything else. So I found myself not really being invested in it because I was so eager to get back to these other plot lines that had huge stakes. Now, this plotline did do a lot of character development that I appreciated. I felt like it needed to be either earlier in the book or uh, the person I buddy read it with, Kyle, thought that it read like a novella, which I actually really love. Like it almost felt like it should be taken out and be a novella between the third book and the fourth book because I would have loved it as a novella. I would have loved it on its own, but its placement was tough for me. And what's interesting is a couple other friends who had arcs and I didn't say anything about it, reached out to me when I posted my review and said, what did you think of the cooking scene? It was a little too long for me. So I think I would have liked it again, either earlier in the story, a separate novella, or about 50% shorter. It just really took me out of the narrative. And I think part of that, um, this book suffers from one other thing that every book like this has suffered from that I've read, which is when a book is split into two, it always feels like half a narrative. I have, that has happened a ton in fantasy. I have read a ton of books that were supposed to be one book that were split into two, and you can always tell because it feels like I read half a book. And I think that also hurt the cooking part because if that cooking part had come halfway through the novel, I would have appreciated it a lot more than in the last quarter when I'm expecting things to kind of be at their climax. So just know that when you read it, it does really feel like part one of a two-part series. It feels like when you go to the theater to see Dune and you loved it, but you were like, not done. <laughs> the detractor and benefit of that is like, I'm super excited for the Speaking Bones. I think that's what it's called. That's coming out in June. I'm excited to read it like right away because I want to know what happens. But I would suggest if you haven't started the series, this is actually a pretty good time to start because they're long books and they're slow burns. So they're not going to be something like you speed through. So if you start reading in the next couple months, you will be done in time to read the final installment in June. I would recommend, however, saving this so that you could read this and book four back to back because I think that is probably going to be the way that they should be read. I know I'm extremely eager get to get into it and to feel like I'm completing this narrative, particularly because both The Grace of Kings and Wall of Storms are very complete novels, particularly Grace of Kings. Grace of Kings can almost be a standalone, kind of in the way that the first um, Mistborn, The Final Empire is. Like you finish that and the book feels very complete even though you know there's more. That's how The Grace of King feels. And Wall of Storms is similar in that way. Like it's a very definitive ending. So The Veiled Throne sticks out because it's not, again, by nature, because he, Liu was forced to split it in half. And bouncing off that, again, Grace of Kings is a great one to start with because it feels so complete that you could read it now and not feel like you immediately needed to go on to Wall of Storms because there is such a big time gap. So I think there's like no better time to start the series than now. I highly recommend it. I don't know why this is such like a sleeper book. It's won awards. It was a Nebula finalist. His other work has won awards. It just feels like people are missing out on this awesome series. And so I'm gonna be the one to champion it and try to force people to read it. So if you've read any of them, let me know what you thought of them below. And if you have read The Veiled Throne or are planning on reading it, please message me about the cooking plot line and about Timu because I need justice for him. And he's like the only one I really desperately need to just somehow have a good ending. It's like the only character, I just need him to have a good ending. And I need to know if you guys all feel the same. As always, if you like this kind of videos, please subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading as well as other nerdy rants, you can follow me on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time, bye.